Well, I'm so thrilled here to be with somebody who's not only a friend, somebody I have great admiration for, Cindy Jacobs. It's an honor uh, for me, Cindy, to be part of the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders. I love what you guys do, and that's what I want to talk about. Convening the Prophets, an international company of prophets, to really sit down and discuss what is the Holy Spirit saying, weighing those words, evaluating those words. And I wanted to ask you just, just briefly in our time together, what do you, what do the Council of Prophets sense the Holy Spirit is saying uh, for the days ahead? Well, thank you for having me on and asking. Uh, it's a very interesting time. Of course, we could answer that question on a number of different levels, uh, Larry. Uh, spiritually and revival-wise, we feel we're doing great. We feel like there's, especially, I'm talking in the U.S. because that's what my knowledge is right now. There are many campuses really on fire for God. Uh, churches, people are getting saved. So we're very, very excited about that. Uh, one thing that we did uh, discuss about was how in the Welsh revival, uh, Reese ha that Reese Hall prayed for, House prayed for, uh, he was very disappointed that the revival did not continue. And his analysis was they just stopped praying. And so in the middle of the revival that we are in, we must keep praying for revival. We must keep praying for our campuses. And we must keep praying that it will continue. And this is very, very important. So that's one part. I don't know if you want to remark on that. No, I would say keep going. Just enjoy because yeah. I think there's the balance there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're excited about that. Um, uh, on uh, a global level, uh, there was consensus that we are in a war season. Now, of course, you don't have to be a prophet to know that. But you do need to have prophetic input to know what to do. Uh, a, a lot of people just get scared or they think, oh, dear, you know, what's going to happen to us? Well, God had called up and he said to us he needs wartime intercessors, our watchmen, to pray, to pray that we not have World War III uh, things are escalating. Not everybody watches global news, but there are certain escalations. In fact, there are so many fronts where war can break out. Uh, I'm receiving intelligence from Poland where they're doing analysis of Ukraine and that they feel that that uh, uh, without the proper funding that Ukraine will just be pass through and used as a base to launch against all Europe. NATO will be involved and we'll be in a World War III. That's a very real thing. So we need wartime intercession. We need watchmen on the wall. We need home front intercession. And we need foreign or we need overseas, at least from us, you know, uh, it de may depend on where you're watching as far as, you know, how you interpret that. But we can't be lazy. Another thing that we were, it was emphasized to us, uh, if we want to go to the personal level, that the door is in the floor. And that's, what, it, what does that mean? That we have got to be in humility that there is no place right now for arrogance, even among the prophetic movement or thinking, I know how to do it better, you are lesser, you know, and that we need to watch for that. And it's wonderful. And, and we also uh, had a word, which is very wonderful, that we're going from a company of prophets to a family of prophets. Mm. Now, this is very important. Why? Because families have relationships. Families test things with one another. A family, one person in a family doesn't work in an isolated manner. And in that isolated manner, uh, make uh, decrees uh, about uh, issues that, that, if, that are broad issues. And while sometimes that will happen prophetically, if they're serious issues, that we need to have them judged. We, as you know, Larry, as the 
Apostolic Council for Petty Elders, and there's 50 of us there. We uh, have a consensus on several levels. One, that we will judge words with one another if they're serious of nature. And two, that we will be in covenant with one another. In other words, we're not going to um, say things or, or hear other people saying things, you know, about others. Uh, and we're not going to, you know, like feed into that. Uh, and so it's very important to be in covenant. Now, sometimes you have to talk about things, you know, sometimes it is. And I, I've heard you recently talk about false prophets, those that you really feel are false. I had not followed some of that till I saw some of the things you were putting out. Yeah. I, and that's stuff I don't like. What, what I like to do, I mean, th th those are the things, the conversations we never want to have. I'm like, Lord, do you really want me to address this? Like, Larry, it's not intended for you to become a heresy hunter. It's not even intended for the Lord to say, you know, Larry, go name names. I did name mm -hmm. them. I named you. I named people that I, in the <laughs> positive, because what I love about what we're doing um, is that you bring the prophets together for alignment, safety, accountability. That is so needed. And I just want to let our folks know, like, I, we believe, we love the prophetic. And again, more than anything, more than going after identifying the false, our quest, our heart is to burn for truth. I, I don't, I, I don't ever. So let me, let me ask you this question. When it comes to the global prophetic consultation, when it comes to the apostolic council, um, what, what really provoked you to put that together to establish that? We received a prophetic word in 2017 from James Gall at the ACPE meeting and uh, that, and it was to Mike and I, that we were to gather the prophets from the world and that we were to do it at Trinity. Mm. And so then, you know, we had to pray, Mike and I, and say, well, what will that look like? And what do we do with that? We were already meeting with ACPE and even mainly, um, mainly U.S. at that time, we kind of had invited guests who had roundtables from around the world. But really, since 2017, the prophetic has exploded around the world. Many nations are doing their national roundtables. And then we had to say, well, what do we do with that? And so we did... And we also knew that group dynamics can't, you can't really dialogue with a group of more than about 50. So we didn't want to just expand the ACPE, although those we invited to the Global Prophetic Consultation, many of them are worthy, certainly, to sit on the ACPE. So then we began to invite and we asked our, our different uh, prophets, would you send us names that people you respect? And then they sent in names, and then I double-checked the names with apostles from around the world that I personally called. Sometimes they go, oh, no, they might have gone in with them, but on a national level, don't touch that. And so I vetted it as many ways as I could, you know, to bring them. And so we usually have two, between two and 300. We had from uh, 32 nations this year. So what we're hearing is from 200 or 300 prophets, the, a word of the Lord. And I love it because it's the collect, it, it's the mind of Christ being represented by so many different parts. And, uh, you know, as, as we conclude, what, what I appreciated was this general consensus that we are in a season of war. But what mm -hmm. I honor about you is you're a prophet and intercessor. And the invitation is when people get these warning words or are operating as watchmen and we see something bad coming, your provocation to all of us is to pray, to interrupt the plans of the enemy. I mean, honestly, that's why we did this book here, Invading the Enemy's Strongholds. I believe that is the assignment. For those of you who are watching, that's our assignment. When the prophets give a word of warning, I do believe it is an invitation for intercession so we can actually shift things. But Cindy, what would you say about that? Yes, well, you know, this invading the enemy strongholds, and I love the subtitles, targeting the intercession that unleashes revival, awakening, and reformation. And uh, 
this is the first of its kind. I wrote Possessing the Gates, but that where we talk about informed reformers and informed intercessors, and where we talk about the strongholds that are over various as aspects of society. So how can you pray if you don't know how to be informed about what to pray about? And then what do you do and how to pray once you know? No, I, I love that. And again, I think this is going to help people as we go into this wartime season. I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to be an informed intercessor so you can interrupt. I think inter intercession interrupts the plans of the enemy. And uh, Cindy, so, so grateful for you. I want to encourage people as January is here. I want you to check out the word of the Lord that Cindy has put together. Stay tuned at Generals International. I have it, generals.org. You'll get information on the website. Join their mailing list. You get wonderful, encouraging, prophetic videos from Cindy. And again, the new book here, Invading the Enemy Strongholds, is available. So thank you so much, Cindy. We're so grateful for you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be with you as always.